Welcome back guys, Jimmy Jules 153 here, back with another episode of Short Circuits. Today we'll be looking at how to build a functional AI that has three different modes, a patrol mode, a follow player mode, and an attack mode. You can see at the moment, the AI is just patrolling the area. As soon as that enemy sees our character, he's going to come towards us and try and attack us. So if we walk out from behind this wall, he'll see us because we're in his line of sight, and then once he gets close enough, he'll start to attack us. Eventually he will kill us. Once we're out of his line of sight for long enough, he'll go back to patrolling again. So we'll just be going through how to build this. So we're just going to start off with our basic deluxe puppet here. We'll scope into the puppet logic and just remove the follow behavior and the level complete microchips because we don't need those. And we'll jump into the controller logic and we'll just add a microchip down here, just so that we keep everything nice and tidy. And we'll give this a light bulb just so it's easy to tell what it is. Let's call this AI. Okay. So we're going to want something to cycle through our separate modes for the AI. So we need to follow the player when it sees the player, we need to patrol, and we also need to attack as well. So we'll have three different modes, so we'll have three different outputs on the selector. This selector is going to cycle through our modes, and we'll use different triggers to activate the different ports. Our default mode is going to be the patrol. So for our patrol, we'll put down a microchip here. And we'll just make this one time. So for the patrol, we're going to want the AI to move between two different locations. When it gets to one location, we want it to go back towards the other location and vice versa. We'll use another selector to cycle between the different locations that it's going to be moving towards. And we'll be using a trigger zone to detect when it gets to those locations. We'll configure those shortly. We're also going to need a follower, and this will be the thing that makes our puppet actually move between the two locations. The followers follow tags, so we're going to need to put down two tags in our scene for it to patrol between. We'll grab out a microchip, and we'll just make this one our world settings, so we'll just give it a landscape icon, and we'll grab out a tag from up here. And we'll call this one Troll 1. And we'll just copy that. And then this one, Patrol 2. So now we'll just move these two tag locations. Once we open up the tweak menu, we can actually move the tag. It'll appear above the microchip. So we can move these two tags and set them to our two locations that we want our AI to travel between when it's patrolling. Let's put the first one there, and the second one can go over here. So we've got our two tags set up now, so we need to make our player patrol between these two tags. Initially, by default, the output A on the selector is going to be active, so by default we want our AI to travel to the patrol 1 tag. We'll turn the strength all the way up, and we'll turn the dampening all the way up as well, just so that it moves our character. We'll move the speed to around 4 meters a second. Once it reaches that patrol 1 tag, we then want it to start following the patrol 2 tag and head back in the other direction. So we'll copy that follower and we'll make this one follow the patrol 2 tag. Now to alternate between these two followers, we're going to use the trigger zones to detect those tags. So we'll set these to the tag setting, and we'll set this one to patrol 1, and then we'll copy this. Oh, actually, we'll change the zone a little bit first, because they end up on top of the tag. Let's move that to around the character, make it a bit smaller because we don't need it huge. Put it about there, that'll be fine. Okay, so that's our first trigger zone. We'll copy that, 
and we'll make this one look for patrol 2. So when it reaches the patrol 1 tag, we want it to start following the patrol 2 tag. And when it reaches the patrol 2 tag, we want it to start following the patrol 1 tag again. So it's just going to alternate between these two tags and start following each of them. So now if we hit play, the AI will go towards the first tag and then the second tag and alternate between them. If I pin this one to the screen so we can see what's happening, it's detecting that tag and switching it to the patrol 2. And that is our first mode, that's all we need to do for the first one. So we're just going to hook that mode up to the first port on the selector, because this by default is going to be active. So by default it's going to be patrolling. And we'll just rename this as well, just so it's nice and clear what it is. We can keep track of it later. So we've got our patrol chip there. Now, for the line of sight, we need to use a gadget that's capable of looking for a target and telling us when it's hit that target. So a laser scope is what we're going to use for this, because that is perfect. And we'll just use line of sight, we'll use a camera so when the puppet sees him. So this microchip here is going to be what triggers our second state in the AI, so what triggers the follow. So we'll initially grab out a laser scope. And we're going to want to only detect a certain label in this laser scope, and just accidentally open the keyboard. We're going to want to only detect the friend label there, so we'll turn all the rest of them off. Don't need any of those on. We're going to only want to detect the friend label. And we'll grab out another puppet, just while we've got that fresh in our minds. Honk him down, and we'll label this puppet as friend. So this laser scope will only hit that puppet. We also need to turn off the x-ray mode. So when this is on, the laser scope will travel through things that it's not labelled to hit. When it's off, it will hit something even if it's not labelled to detect it, and it won't output a signal. So if we turn this off, if it hits anything but the friend label, it won't output a signal. But as soon as it hits that friend label, it will output a signal, so that will tell us when the player is in the line of sight. But you'll see how this works shortly. We'll turn the range for this up quite a long way, and we're going to want to point at a tag. This tag is going to be the tag that is on our player, so we'll grab our player here and jump into the logic. We'll delete the follow and the level complete logic because we don't need that, and we'll grab out tag, and we'll label this tag as player. There We'll also move this tag origin just to the center of the puppet, just like so, just so that the laser scope is pointing at something solid. Now if we tell this laser scope to look for the player tag, you can see that that laser scope is pointing directly at the puppet. You can see that the hit something output is actually not lit up at the moment, that's because our x-ray mode is turned off and it's hitting this wall that is not labeled with friend. Even though it's not set to detect the wall, it will stop at it. You can see that if we turn the x-ray mode on, the hit something output turns on. That's because it's traveling through this wall, because it's not labeled to hit it. But if we turn that back off, it turns off again. This way we can figure out whether the player is in the line of sight of the AI with only one laser scope. I'll also move this laser scope origin just to the center of the puppet, or at the puppet's head. When the player is in the line of sight of the AI, we want it to activate our second mode. So we'll plug this into the B port on the selector. We'll just grab out another microchip here just to represent our second mode for now. And this second mode is going to be follow the player, so we'll just label that one with the player. So now, whenever the player is in the line of sight, it'll turn on this microchip and disable this one. So it'll turn off the patrol and turn on the follow. At the moment our first mode's a little bit quick, and the player also is not pointing towards the location that it's travelling to. So we'll just quickly add a couple of things in there just to make that happen. We'll grab out a look at rotator, which is just the eye with a rotator around it. And we'll make this fairly quick. 
kind of strength right up there and the dampening as well and we'll want this one to look for patrol 1 and we'll duplicate that and we'll want this other one to look for patrol 2. So when it's traveling towards patrol 2 we want it to look at patrol 2 and when it's traveling towards patrol 1 we want it to look at patrol 1. That's the tag. He's also moving a little bit quickly at the moment so we'll just turn down the speed of these followers just down to 2.8. Okay now you can see what's happened here is he's traveling towards them and he is rotating but he's rotating in the wrong direction. Now that's because by default for some reason the arrow points out to the puppet's left. So we'll turn on the grid here just so that it rotates the arrow at 90 degrees and we'll just drag that around and we'll do the exact same for the patrol one. Get out of the way. Just drag that around. There we go. So now the character will be looking forwards towards the tags rather than the, to the side. So now if we hit play, he'll turn around and start walking towards the tags. You can increase that speed if you want it to turn a bit quicker as well. Now for our second mode, we've got a very similar setup to our first one. We're just going to want to follow the player. So we'll copy just one of these sets here, one of the lookout rotators and the followers. And we'll drag that onto our follow microchip. And this is turned off at the moment. I'm just going to unplug that for now. So we're going to want to follow the player tag because we're going to want to follow the player. Maybe at 3.2 meters a second. And I'll turn the rotation speed up a bit as well. So they look directly at them really quickly. And that should be actually all we need for this second mode because that's going to then once it's activated, start following the player. We'll plug our B port on the selector back into the microchip. So now whenever the laser scope activates, it should activate that B port and start following the player. So we can test this now. If we hit play, you can see he's patrolling. But then if we drag the puppet out, you can see he runs towards him, keeps running towards him as well and kills him. So if I hit play again now, you can see that the puppet is actually floating up towards the player there. That's because we haven't turned down the Y dampening, the Y strength, sorry. So we'll turn that all the way down so it doesn't follow or dampen in the Y axis so they can move up and down freely, but it only affects their Z and their X axis movement. So now if we hit play, you can see that it gets, stays stuck to the ground and goes towards the player. For some reason, that Oh, it's looking at the patrol one tag as well. Just need to change that to player so that it looks at the player instead. And there we go. So you can see here that when I hit play, by default, output A is active, which is the patrol output. So the AO will patrol, and then the laser scope will hit the character and detect it, and activate the output B, which is the follow the player output. So that part's pretty functional. We're also going to want the AI to start patrolling again if they lose sight of the player. So when the laser scope is not hitting the player anymore, we'll grab out a not gate here. So when this laser scope is not hitting something, or not hitting the player, we'll start a timer and we'll just set this timer to, let's see, one second. So after one second of not seeing the character, the AI will start patrolling again and we'll reset this timer when the laser scope does hit something. So whenever the laser scope hits something, it'll reset the timer, and whenever the laser scope isn't hitting something, the timer will start and count up to one second. We'll plug this timer pulse into the A port on the selector, the A input port, so it will default back to the patrol state once it hasn't seen the character for a second. We can test this now. If we start the character in the line of sight, you can see the laser scope is lit up, so the character is in the line of sight of the AI over here. If we start them in the line of sight and then quickly move them out, you can see after a second, he starts patrolling again. So that's our two stages completely finished. Now for the third stage, which is the attack, we'll grab out another microchip. We'll label this one with a skull. We'll call this one attack. So for the attack, 
we're going to want to activate this when the AI is within a certain range of the character. So to detect that, we'll use a trigger zone. We'll just copy one of the ones that we used for the first mode. And we'll let this trigger zone search for the player tag. And we'll make that a little bigger. Just so that when the player is in this radius, he starts to attack. We'll plug this detected output into the C input for the selector so that when the player is detected by this trigger zone, it activates the C output and we'll plug that into this microchip here. We'll activate a few things with this mode. So we'll grab out a node and we'll plug the C output into this node. We'll do something a little ridiculous with this attack. So we'll grab out a keyframe and we'll keyframe our AI just with his arms out. Perfect. That's all we need. And we'll grab out a, let's do a little rotator attack. We'll grab out our rotator here. And set this to fairly quick. And again, this points to the puppet's left by default. So we'll turn on a grid so it rotates at 90 degrees nicely. Just make that vertical. Make the strength something like 70% and the dampening the same. And we'll also grab a follower and we'll just use the same follower for our second mode. And we'll also want this mode to do damage. So we'll grab out a health modifier. So these are the four gadgets we're going to use for our third mode. We'll plug each of these into the node just so that when this node gets powered on, all of these gadgets are powered on as well. We'll give this keyframe a little bit of fade in time and fade out time. And we'll change this health modifier a bit as well. We'll set it to a zone so that it does damage within a zone. And we'll set this to let's say 10. And we'll set it to do that 10 damage continuously in the zone. That's far too large. And we'll want that zone to be about the distance of his arms. So we'll just make it a little bit bigger than that. And that'll do fine. We'll also only want this health modifier to do damage to the friend label because that's what our player is labeled with. And we'll also want the follow speed to be a little bit slower so that while he's attacking, he's a bit slower than when he's running after you. And that should be all we need for our third mode. So now we've got our three modes, our patrol, our follow, and our attack with no K. So we're just in test mode here with our AI microchips pinned to our screen so we can see what's going on with the AI. You can see by default that he's on the port A, which is our first mode, so he's just patrolling there. Once he sees us, the laser scope will activate and it will put him into the second mode. And then once he's close enough, that trigger zone will activate the attack. You can see though, once it activates the trigger zone, that timer causes issues and puts it back into the follow mode. So while we're in that trigger zone, we don't really want that microchip to be active at all. So we'll jump back into edit mode here. Rewind time. So while this trigger zone is active, or while the player is in attack range, we don't want this microchip here to be active at all. So we'll grab out a not gate. And we'll plug our trigger zone into this. So when the player is not in attack range, this microchip will be active but when they are in attack range, it won't be active. Now you can see that if we go back into test mode and get in the line of sight again, he'll stay in that attack mode. Now for some reason he's not quite moving there, so let's just figure that out. Jump into our follower settings. And I just don't quite think it's strong enough. Yeah, there we go. The followers do need to be quite strong to move the players, so just keep that in mind. 
Let's keep that at 96, eh? And that's fine. I probably want it to rotate a little bit quicker just to make it look a little more menacing. There we go, just for fun. Well, that's absolutely horrifying. Okay, so now if we hit play, you can see that as soon as we're in the line of sight, it'll cycle through those different modes, and then when he's close enough, it'll start attacking us. Guys, I just spent a quick moment debugging why it wasn't dealing damage when it was in the zone there, and it's because I had set the health to positive 10 rather than negative 10, so I'll just change that back, just keep that in mind as well. It does need to be a negative value if you want to take away health. There we go, that's working nicely. So now if we jump into play mode and possess our character, we can get into line of sight, and he'll start to follow us and then attack us. And then if we're out of that line of sight for long enough, we'll go back to patrolling between those two tags again. These are just three simple modes using pretty simple gadgets, so you guys can replace these gadgets if you want the AI to do different things in its modes. And that's all there is for this one guys. If you liked this video or if it helped you at all, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.